Welcome to the fourth and final installment of the Better Than Stock 2JZ Bottom End Build. In the prior episode, we watched Safe Neighbor from Neighbor Racing measure and balance and then prepare the piston and rod assemblies. Now we get to watch Safe install the rings onto the pistons and then install the pistons into the block. Be sure to listen in when Safe describes the importance of the piston rings from filing them down to get proper gap, to making sure the gap is spread correctly around the piston. My name is Safe Neighbor from Neighbor Racing, uh, engine builder, tuner over here. We uh, specialize in the 2JZ LS platforms. Um, Supra is our main bread and butter. Yeah. So why do people, why do you grind the rings? What does that do? So, with heat, metal expands. Right. So if you don't file them right, these rings as they're going up and down, they'll butt. And they'll okay. Some of, sometimes they'll fuse, and if, if, they, if they butt, as the, as the piston's going up, it's gonna jam you, so you're either gonna knock a ring line out and the whole top of the piston can come off, or it's gonna completely curl up, it's gonna, it's gonna heat up so much that you'll just, it'll, it'll seize the motor, melt, I mean, you, can, you can ruin everything. So you file them just enough according to the bore and the piston size, so that way when it does expand, there's still a gap. And you also got a little bit of blow by too, depending on how much uh, cylinder pressure you have. So, funny story is actually, I do got a friend of mine that was building 7M a while ago. I'm not gonna say any names, but <clears throat> uh, he bought Porsche Pistons, you know, everything, whatever, he put it together, not filed anything. He just slapped them on, cool, everything good, and it spun good, cold, right? Good. He started it and it got up to uh, you know temp, and he did one pull, and uh, every almost every single piston, li literally the whole top crown of it just shattered right off. It broke. It broke the ring lines on it. Wow! <clears throat> because they all just see it, it binded up, but um, and that wasn't even that much power either. So. It's very uh, very critical you do that. Do that right. There's also a certain way for these to go up. You have a mark okay. on them. Mark always faces up. Or a dot. Some, some manufacturers put like ends on them or dots or arrows. We put them in what they currently sit at. Some rings you might get depending on you know how good your machinist is but some or, or how consistent the rings are sometimes you'll have a machinist that overboards these by like a thou more to where like when you put these rings in you check them there's really almost no filing needed depending on what you're doing with the car and how much boost you're pushing. Um, Some of them you'll put the ring in, you're like, holy crap, that's way too sloppy. So now you gotta look at other options. You're putting them in upside down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just putting them in nice and square. Um, about two thirds, no, not two thirds, but uh, almost half. To get accurate measurements, because your cylinders do taper a little bit. Now you're measuring how much gap is between the edges. Currently, yep. Okay. We're just seeing how much gap it is right now. Um, still pretty low. We're definitely going to have to file these. Up. 
Is there an ideal gap? Um, well, does it depend on the depends distance? On, yep. Okay. It depends on your board, depends on the piston diameter. Um, there's a certain um, your typical numbers that I like to use for my program. They're called the magic numbers. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but yeah, so a lot of a lot of ring filers, a lot of a lot of engine bundles we use like the electronic ones, a little sure. motor on there, and just it's a lot faster. But there's a lot more room for error. Okay. These I don't like messing with, so I'll gotcha. take my time. I'll do it by hand. Yeah. Um, you always file towards the inside of the piston, so that way you don't leave a burr on the very outside scratching your skin ball. Um, you always make sure if there's anything, knock it down the file. Make sure there's no sharp edges. If it cuts your, your glove. And then your, your second ring will scrape it back down. Okay. So, that goes down all the way to the bottom. Put the top rail on first. Bring it around. Bottom rail in, bring it around. Second ring. No binding, that was good. Ready to roll. We'll line the rings up, they, they, go, they go in a certain position one, where the gaps are. Yeah, one yeah, forward, one's, the forward, one's 180, one's uh, the side, the side, all the rings placed in the middle. Is the piston ring compressor. Okay. A lot of there's there, there's another tool that's out there, it's like a clamp style. It's a metal wrap. And it's just, you just crank a, a little key and it tightens up the rings, compresses them in a piston so you can drop them in the hole. Um, those metal edges are so sharp when you're sitting there, and it's not a good compressor. You know, cut your hands up sometimes. If you got aluminum blocks, it will uh, mar up the block, it'll scratch it. Huh. The deck. These Weiss goes, or I'm sure there's plenty of other manufacturers make them. Um, exact ring or exact size for your bore. Are they tapered then? So yep, it it's tapered. Push them down. So it starts out wide where everything gets in, you just push it in. It compresses it and you just pop it right in. You're about to see that here in a second. So. That goes in there. Like 
so. go on one way. So after we checked the stretch, they were actually at 56 foot pounds on here for them to be in the perfect spot. So I'll do um, three steps. Start at 35. Keep going back and forth so it's an even squish. Reef on one side. And it comes up nice and smooth. You're in the back. <laughs> awesome.
<laughs> I'll have that part out. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> That'll be the blooper reel at the end. Yeah. <laughs>